In this series of programs, we're going to be going through extrication. We're going to be talking about the way cars are built, the way they're put together, the way we take them apart. We're going to look at the safety systems of the cars, what are our concerns, what are hazards to us, what are hazards to the patients. We're also going to go through techniques. On the techniques, we're going to be reviewing Caron's tires, a car on its side, and a car upside down. So if we think about it, our wrecks and one of all of our wrecks, basically, are going to be one of those three positions. What we're trying to do is we've introduced a card, a little task card. It's going to line us up with a couple of predetermined tasks, as well as going to show us a series of kind of how do we go through the different steps. Within these different steps, we're basically tying it all together. So when we do a car on its tires versus a car on its side, 95% of the techniques are going to be the same. We take a car upside down. Again, 95% of the techniques are going to be the same as car on its tires, car on its side. The goal behind all of this is in the training side of it. We want to make you quicker and more efficient. If you have to memorize one way to do things, we're going to be a lot smoother and a lot quicker. As we go through this training, our goal is to reduce our scene times. When we're talking about reducing scene times, we're looking at overall out of service time for you when you're on scene, as well as the overall health care for the patient. The quicker we get the patient out, the better their survival rate. The quicker we get you off scene, the, you're ready to respond to additional calls now. When we look at a lot of departments, the average out there, we're around looking about an hour for most extrications. With this training, we're going to be down in that 10 to 15 minute mark, and that's our goal as we go forward. Let's talk about stabilizing a car on its side. We, for starters, think about how much energy this car went through to get to this position. It's rolled over however many times. We're not concerned about this thing falling over for me bumping it. If it was that fragile, it would have kept going in the original, in the original rollover. So for us, when we get here, car's on by the side, we're going to stabilize it. Initially, we're going to come in here with our strut. When we talk about the car itself, we've got a clean side versus dirty side. The dirty side is the side that touches the ground. Clean side is our painted side. On the dirty side, we're going to stabilize it. So initially, we're going to come in here with our strut. Our best grab place is going to be the subframe. If I don't have access to the subframe, my next option is to come up here and grab the pinch weld. If the pinch weld is not an option for me, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and we'll change out our head. We're going to grab our pick and actually just come into a natural body hole opening. The reason we're going to use a natural hole opening when the car's being built, those are reinforced and made to help hold the car. If I come in with my Halligan tool and I just make a hole, once I load that hole that I've made, we'll just tear it out. For now, we'll just go ahead and we'll stick with our subframe because that's our best option for us. That's the strongest option to use. So we're going to come in here, we're going to grab the subframe. At that point, now we're going to need to stabilize the base of the strut against the car. Remember we talked about it earlier in some of our other videos, but in the steel of the cars, our high strength steel, Starts at the A post and ends at the C post, so basically it's in between the tires. So when we go to grab these guys, we want to grab those locations. So if I'm coming up here into the front, we've got a hole right here in the subframe I can grab. We come back here to the back side. I've got a tie down point right there we can grab. At that point, we'll take our, our ratchet strap. Hook into here. Hook into here. We'll come right here, grab the base of our strut, and we're going to tension it. All I got to do, right there, we see the car wiggle. I know I've captured the load, the car's not going to come towards me. The concern now is that the car can go away from me. Traditionally, a lot of people have always been taught to put a strut on both sides of the car. The issue we run into when I put a strut on the other side of the car, on the clean side, what does that do to my patient access? It blocks it. So if we can do all of our stabilization here on the dirty side of the car, we're going to keep it from going either way, and we're also going to give ourselves total access to the passenger compartment. So we've got strut here keeping it from coming towards us to keep it from going away. We're going to take our tie back strap. On our tie back strap, we're just going to grab the same points on the top half of the car as we grabbed on the bottom of the car. Come back to here. We got a floating anchor. This can come in and grab our ratchet strap. Ratchet strap is going to be tied back to whatever our anchor needs to be. It could be a fire apparatus, it could be a signpost, a fence, it could be guardrails, whatever you deem is a, a good enough anchor for you. At that point, we're going to tension it. At 
As we tension it, back tie strap is secure, strut secure, the car's solid, we're not going anywhere. Now we complete our extrication. All right, we're gonna stabilize the car inside as we're walking up to the car. We're gonna check the car, car looks stable. I'm gonna come up, grab my subframe. From there, I'm looking at the car itself, trying to figure out where's our strong parts to grab. On grabbing the car, we're gonna go ahead and secure in between the tires. So I'm looking for frame holes, frame hole top, frame hole bottom. From there, we'll bounce around the other side of the car. Come up here, frame hole right here, perfect. So we've got a spot there to grab. We're gonna go ahead and grab the base of our strut. We're gonna come into here, hook that guy up. Tightening it up, all I'm gonna do, tension it, we're there. Now I'm gonna grab my back tie strap, try to look behind me, figure out where's my anchor gonna be. I've got an anchor back there we're gonna to secure to. An anchor can be a ratchet strap, could be a winch line, doesn't really matter what we're gonna to go to. Grab there and there. We're gonna come on back. To there, to there. Tension her up. Done. When we look at the speed of getting this car stabilized, a couple things are really important. First one is how do you set the rig up? Have you set your rig up for success? Can I open one compartment door and everything I need to do this is all together in one spot? Or am I gonna have to open multiple doors to grab different things? Do I have to unload half the compartment to get to a strap? That's gonna be real important. Set up the rig. If it's a critical function, that stuff should be on the outside of the compartment. Stuff that's low use can go on the inside. Stuff that's not time critical can go on the inside. From there, when we walk up to the car, if we look at it, we had a clear plan. So we look at our, when we set up our training and we look at our training bolt-ins, we set them up very specific. Every time I show up to the car, this is how we do it. When we start getting on scene, if I have multiple ways of doing things, that's gonna equal analysis paralysis. Right? I give you too many choices, so that's like the janitor's key ring. I show up and I've got all these keys I gotta flip through when I get on scene. First, if I take it all down to one master key, when you show up, here's how we do things. We're gonna be quick, simple, and easy. All right, so on scene, we've got two different operation modes. I got rescue mode and recovery mode. When we're in rescue mode, we need to hustle up, get this job done quickly and efficiently, and move forward. If when I'm in recovery mode, by all means, we can take all day long. Where I kinda like to take that to the personal side, I look at hunting camp. When I'm at hunting camp, if I need to go split some wood, it takes me a couple beers, five minutes, and I've got two cords of wood split. I take that same process and I take it to the fire station. It's gonna take 40 people, four hours to do the same task. So when we're talking about the two of them, we need to equate that to rescue versus recovery. We look at our car right here, we stabilize this in about a minute. We look at the car, it's not gonna tip over on me, but if I push hard enough, I can get a couple inches of wiggle out of the car. And we're, when we're in rescue mode, does that couple inches gonna affect us? It's not. Versus if I wanted to take the time to make this car rock solid, it's gonna take me 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to get this car rock solid. In that time frame, what happens to my red patient? They're no longer red, and now we're into recovery mode. Once we hit recovery mode, bring a wrecker in, tip the car on its tires, and go ahead and do your recovery at that point. All right, so now we're gonna work on a car, cutting a car on its side. So we've already stabilized the car off the dirty side with our back tie strap. Now we're gonna come up here and work on the front side of the car. So within our Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2 tasks, remember the Firefighter 2 is a stabilization person, so they're the ones that would be working on the back end of the car. On the clean side of the car, we're gonna be doing the Firefighter 1 job, which is gonna be, again, taking all of our glass out, doing our peeling peaks and marking our cut locations. On the car itself, we're gonna stay really similar to how we do the car on its tires and the car upside down. We're just gonna, we're gonna cut our A post same as we did. Our B post is gonna be up here at the roof level. C post is where we normally cut them as well. All right, so Firefighter 1, just like normal, we're gonna come in. Taking our glass. If we got patient, we would have taken our back glass, crawled inside, covered the patient up with the tarp, and continued breaking our glass. Seatbelts, we're not going to cut our seatbelts because I got my patient hanging by the seatbelt. We don't want to cut that. So if we got our glass out, we can go ahead and do our peeling peaks. So again, just like normal, come down here, top in our seat post. We're able to see our hazard. I know where the hazard's at here. Come into here. We're checking our B post, we're good there. On my windshield, this situation here, we're gonna take the whole windshield out. So I make a little purchase point, come in here. And 
We're just gonna take our windshield out. As the glass comes out, take it out of our action circle. That's clear. Go ahead and double check our A-post. Perfect, we see our hazards. Go ahead and mark our cut locations like we normally do. Again, B post, we're going to cut it right at the roof because if my patient's hanging by their seatbelt, I don't want to drop them. And we'll go ahead and secure our battery and we'll be ready for the next step. So, securing our battery. I can pop out my grill, find my hood release cable, a little tension on the cable. Should pop the hood up, go ahead and hit our release, hood comes open, we're cutting our battery cables, remember you cut your cables, we're going to take a chunk out of it, that way the two ends can't come back together. We're going to cut the ground, we're going to cut the positive. And we're ready to the next step. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and just take the hood out of our way and be done with it. So hood's already open. We're just gonna go ahead, pop our struts off, and we're gonna grab our recip saw, and we'll just cut the hood out of the way. So on the recip saw, we're just gonna cut right up here, right at the where the hinge of the rut or the hinge is. Once we got our battery secured, we're going to go ahead and just cut the hood off. So cutting the hood off, we're just going to come right up here, right at the base of the hinge. There's the top half. Bottom half. And hood comes out of the way. You just have to have it paint to pavement when it goes away. At this point, the car's prepped and ready. We've got the car stabilized. We've got our glass out, our peel and peaks are done. Patient's covered, battery's been secured. We're going to go ahead and cut our roof off. Okay, now we're going to cut our roof off. We're going to start off bottom C. <laughs> The reason we're starting to see real life sequence this running through while the windshield and the hood are being secured, I could be starting on these cuts. That's why we're starting back here and working our way forward. On our cuts, we're going to go through bottom C, top C, top B, A, and A. We're leaving the bottom B alone. It's going to act as a hinge for us. And again, I got a patient inside. We have somebody inside and taking care of the patient, holding them in position.
our cuts, our A and our C cuts, same places we would do with the car on its tires, car upside down, car inside, same places, all three positions. The main difference we're going to have, car on its tires, we're cutting that B at the door level, car on side, car upside down, we're cutting the B at the roof level. Our cuts are complete. We're now ready to lay the roof down. All right, so if we had a patient who was unrestrained in the rollover, we show up, typically we're gonna find them sitting like this. They're sitting on their bottom and that bottom, down on the bottom of the car, back is laying against the, ro the roof of the car. We would have covered them up in a tarp during the initial part of the extrication to keep the glass and the debris off of them. We'd have a C-collar. We'd also have somebody inside maintaining C-spine. So at this point now, we need to be able to get our patient out of the car. So what we can do when the roof is still up, We've left that bottom B intact, everything else is cut, so the roof is actually just going to be a hinge for us. So what I can do, I can take my backboard, we're going to drop it down between the patient and the roof. Lean forward just a touch. So as the board goes into position, oh, one more. We now have good spinal alignment of the patient, correct? So now, as we get ready to lay the roof down, as the roof relaxes, where's my patient going? Right on the board. So at this point now, we don't have any manipulation of the spine. All right, so now we're looking at same situation, but my got a patient is hanging by their seatbelt. So we're gonna cut the roof just like we did before. That way, as I lay the roof down, it's nice and controlled. So we got a C-collar on our patient. Again, I'd have somebody inside maintaining C-spine for us. We're gonna bring our board in. What we need to do is we need to take the patient's weight off of the seatbelt and move it onto the back for us. So we're gonna come into here, go and give yourself a hug. Back out. There you go. Come in. There you go. Push in. Good. Okay. Tip, tip the board to me. Walk backwards. All right. So at this point now, we're maintaining the patient's weight on the backboard. They're no longer hanging by the seatbelt. So now, we're going to let them stay, maintain like they are. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this roof out of our way. <laughs> going to drop us a touch. Tool out of the way. I'm going to pull this roof out of the way. Now we're going to come in, we're going to release the seatbelt. Seatbelt's clear. Now we can bring our patient out. All right, so at this point, we've got a phantom person who's maintaining C-spine for us. We're going to do, we're going to show you two different ways of bringing her out of the door, out of the car. Most traditional fire service, emergency service, is what they'll do. They'll come in, they'll grab a hold of the patient, and as they start to bring her out, they'll actually take and roll her onto her back. As we've rolled her onto her back, we've twisted all the spine. If I've got a broken pelvis at all, we've twisted the pelvis. So instead, we're going to change this out. Go ahead and scooch back in. So instead, oh, there we go. So instead of bringing her out and twisting her, what we're going to do is we're actually right now, she's hips and shoulders. So instead, what we're gonna do this time, again, we got a phantom person who's maintaining C-spine. That person will be standing right here to maintain C-spine and we wouldn't be able to get the shot, so that's why it's a phantom person that you're looking through. So we would take, we're gonna bring her out. As we're bringing her out, we're keeping her hips and shoulders. So we've not twisted the spine, we haven't racked the pelvis at all. We can take, the, take and bend the knees and bring the feet back. So we're gonna bring the feet back at this. So now at this point, we haven't twisted the spine, we haven't moved the pelvis. We're gonna go ahead and take her out and at that point, we'll go ahead and roll her under her back, use the secondary backboard. So we're gonna transition. We start off showing you first, if I had an unrestrained patient, how I'd put the board in, lay the roof down, and take them out. From there, we transition to the next harder, which would be a patient still seat belted in. So we showed how to take, lay again, lay the roof down nice and controlled. 
bring the board in, hold their weight, and take our patient out. Now we're transitioning to the third one, which is actually an entrapped patient. So again, we've got a board here. Pretend this is holding our patient in, in position. We're going to take and bring a secondary board in. We're going to bring it here above the patient. We're coming up in between the door and the patient. And we're going to maintain that. That way, as we're taking the fender, taking the door, if we slip and fall, we'll hit the board. If anything drops, it hits the board. My patient sandwich in between is protected. All right, so at this point now, we're dealing with an entrapped patient. So we need to take the fender, take the door, do our relief cuts. We're going to do all those basic same ways we do with the car on its tires, car on its side, car on its top. We're going to do the same way all the way through. When we're up, uh, up here, every now and then we'll have some people who feel uncomfortable about staying on top of the car. The kind of thing I have to say for you is it's six feet up. If it's slippery or it's, it bothers you, you can take some kitty litter, throw it across there as a friction device. The thing about it on a fire side, I go stand on a 10-foot pitched roof all the time and don't worry about it. So we kind of, when we're looking at this, I don't really see a huge issue with standing on a six foot tall flat surface. So let's go ahead and work on our cuts. So to begin with, just like normal, we're going to come into here. We're going to pinch, open up. We're going to pinch our fender. Stand it upright. As we stand it upright, it's going to take and it's going to create that gap for us. We now take, drop the tool into the gap. We're just going to peel our fender out of the way. Again, as we're peeling the fender out of the way, once it becomes loose, grab it. We should be able to just grab it and pull it out of our pull it out of the way. Fender's clear. Now we're going to go after the door just like we normally do. So we're going to come into here. We're going to pinch the skin. Stand upright to expose the door hinge. Come in below. Open it two inches. Dig deeper. Break the door hinge. We're down, we're gonna pop that little wind strap. We're gonna come down to the bottom hinge. Okay, I'm gonna hand the spreader down. We're gonna cut our wiring harness like we normally do. Remember our back where we put between the door and the patient? The nice thing I can do now, I can come back to here. As I jiggle that, I'm going to lift up on the board. The door is going to come free for us. Once the door is free, send it away. This board will stay here because this will be a platform I can work off of, as well as also protecting the patient. At this point now, we'll go ahead and get our cutter up. We're going to make our next couple cuts. Okay, ready, I'm going to stand on the board. Thank you. All right, so cuts. Okay, we're going to cut the subframe in between the strut tower and the firewall. I'm going to come back to the board again. You ready? And again, two fingers above that bottom door hinge.
you start to see that dash lifting that tells us we're getting the strength out of it, we're going to jump down real quick, grab our relief cuts of that, of that center support brace, and we'll be ready to lift our dash. Okay. What we're seeing here is we're gaining access to that center support brace. So we've got the one board here still holding our patient's weight. We can come in below the patient and make those cuts. All right, so the roof is cleared. Our upper subframe is cleared. Lower, lower apos is cleared. We've cleared our supports, our dash supports. Now we're ready to go ahead and do our lift. So we come into here, just like normal. And the goal is to try to keep the spreader straight up and down. You can see as we're going, you can see how much room we're gaining on top as well as down below. We're gaining significant room down below as well. Can we pull our top patient out? I believe so. All right, so we've displaced the dash. My patient in the top is clearing out of the vehicle. Now we're worried about if I've got a patient sitting down below. So we'd have a backboard underneath that patient, just like we do with the upper patient. We've got the secondary backboards above my lower patient, so it's protecting them and it gives me a work surface. Now this upper patient's clear, we're gonna bring in our ram, and we're gonna do down here at the floorboard where the, where the seat bolts to the floor, we know that's a strong part of the car. So we're gonna put one end of the ram there, the other end's gonna go, we're gonna pull this off. We're gonna go right on the steering column, right exactly where it touches the push, pull, the, the push pipe in the center of the car. That way it's not gonna roll on us. So we can take our ram, bring our ram into position. If you can see down below, you see how much room we're gaining. I'll pull my feet up so you can see a little bit better. As it's coming out, there we go and our patient's free. I can get out of the way. We pull this upper board clear. Our lower patient's already sitting on a board. Again, we bring that patient out, hips and shoulders, and we'll come out here and we'll square them up on the board after we get out of the car. While I'm working the clean side, second firefighter is completing dirty side tieback. Looking at our patient, looking good. Okay, I need you to stay still. We're gonna come in and we're gonna help you. Perfect, head on in. Right, we're starting here, the other side is getting stabilized. You, are you ready in there? Not quite. Taking hood off to make fender removal easier. You ready for okay. okay, stand by. Ready for glass, breaking glass. Stand by a second. Completing the peel and peel.
Checking our B post. B post is good. Checking C post. C post is good. Cut locations. Marked. Okay, I'm going to take out the windshield. Top firefighter is removing the fender. Start off the back bottom C. We're doing the top B, then we're going to do the two A's. I'm cutting the B at the rough, that way my patient who's hanging by a seat belt doesn't come loose. Okay, one more time, we're gonna be laying the roof down. All right, ready to lay the roof down? Ready. Roof's coming down. Perfect. Okay, tarp's gonna come off the patient. Bring the board in. Push. Perfect. Walk backwards so we can get her shoulders. Bring her forward. Right there. Okay, you got that? I'm going to cut the seatbelt and we can bring her forward so her weight's on the board. Ready? Cut the seatbelt. Okay. okay, bring her shoulders forward so she's resting on the board. Perfect. You got her? You got C-spine? Yes, sir. Very good. Okay, coming up right over top of your shoulder. Get to the other side of the door, Jake. The second backboard is used to protect the patient. Okay, lift the door latch, take the door away. The door is cleared. Door's clear. Okay, stay stay where you're at. I'm gonna set this here, Can I get off the board. Yep. Hand me the spreader. Better. Cutter coming up. Making upper subframe cut. Right there. Okay, you're doing good. Okay, stand by here. I'm going to cut that other. You're there. Open her up. Up dead heading it. There you go. Close it. 
Good. Switch around, get the front half. Tool over. Okay, go for it. There you go. Open. Yes, cut. Send it to me. Tool. I'm gonna cut that B. I'm gonna cut that B post. Copy. Ready for the drop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cutting the B post. Cutting the B post will allow the roof to be removed. Cut the B post. The roof's going to drop just a little bit. You ready? Okay, speed up. I'm going to pull the roof out. Step towards the front of the car. Knees to the front. Top's coming in. Come around. Very good. Okay. You ready, Jake, for the spreader? Ready for the spreader. Okay, go to the end of the board. Spreader coming up. Let me cut those center support braces. Okay. Hang tight. Bottom one's cut. Yeah. Top one's cut. Okay, ready? We're gonna bring the dash up. Dash coming up, legs okay. clear. Watching for entrapment, go ahead, open up. Watching our steering wheel. Coming up, okay. Coming out. good. Patience free, great. Okay, you good? We're gonna pull this board, I'm good. Board out. board out, clear the board. Okay, come take C spine from the end. Got four, got Goonie. I got C-spine. Seatbelt's C clear. Okay, you take shoulders. Ready? Okay, give yourself a hug. We're going to patient give yourself a hug. Okay. Let's go about two feet. Your call, head. All right, head's count. One, two, three. And we're keeping our hips and shoulders. Good. Okay. On three. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, let's go one more. One more one. On yep. three. One, two, three. Good. And we're going to take and just kind of tuck the feet back. So we're keeping our patience, staying hips and shoulders when we brought her out. That way we're not twisting spine, we're not twisting pelvis. We're going to go ahead and exit the car. Now you've seen how quickly we can do the extrication. Let's talk about why we care about that. So we have a duty to our, to our patients that we're responding on. The duty being to get them out quickly. The quicker we get our patients out, the better their survival rate is. From there, look at our on-scene time. The longer we're on scene means we're out of service. If we're out of service, who's handling the secondary calls that come up? We're bringing in mutual aid companies. We're bringing in other departments. Who's going to handle their calls? If we can get done quicker on scene, we're going to get the patient out and get them going, which is best for them. From there, the quicker we get done on scene, we're going to get ourselves wrapped up and back available for those next calls. So overall, for the health of the system, that's what we're shooting for.